to ask you to give a, a warm round of applause to Prof. Zuchu. The provision of health in Nigeria is the function of the three tiers of government. The local government, the state government, and the federal government. The local government is in charge of the primary health care, and then the uh, state governments are in charge of the secondary health care, that is the general hospitals, and of course the uh, federal government is in charge of the tertiary health care, in addition to the oversight, like policy formulation and all that. And these three levels are supposed to be linked by a referral system. And this has been captured in the Nigerian Health Policy document. And so the evolution of the Nigerian Health System uh, can be seen in three phases. The pre-colonial phase, the colonial phase, and uh, the post-colonial or the post-independent phase. And in this post-independent phase, we have the era of the Basic Health Services Scheme and then the attempts to improve health systems following global trends like primary health care, the MDGs, and of course the most recent universal health uh, coverage. And so let's look at the pre-colonial era. Of course, even before the white man came to Nigeria, the health system had existed, but this was basically controlled by the culture of the people, the beliefs of the people. And so the incidence of diseases, for example, was attributed to witchcraft, sorcery, and mystical forces. And so when people are sick, what usually happens is that they attribute it to some unforeseen forces. And then they have to bring people together to try to find out the reasons. And so they seek for definition from spiritualists and all that. And so, from beginning, the health system has always revolved around the people. And that is the origin of even the modern health system, where we still have the health system revolving around people. So when you have unsudden deaths or like epidemic in those days, people attribute it to what somebody in the society had done. And so they have to seek for help and solution. And so that period was... Uh, filled with traditional practices based on herbal cures. And this was likely integrated with spiritual counseling, which provided both preventive and curative service. For example, if you had a snake bite in those days, what they would do is to make some incisions. And those incisions, you know, looking backwards now, had some scientific connotation because in making these incisions, you are reducing the load of the poison. So these, all these practices went on in the colonial era. And so it was also supplemented by prayers, atonement, and divinations. And of course, we had even our traditional birth attendants in those days because our forefathers were delivered by people and they were not delivered by modern health services. And so that was what was happening in the pre-colonial era. And from then, we moved over to the colonial era the colonial era was purely driven by political and economic factors. So the first recorded modern medical services was during that period. And because it was marked by the European expedition, that was when we had the scramble for Africa. And so a lot of explorers came, and they came with their people. But unfortunately for them, malaria was dealing with them. And so Dr. Baird in 1854 decided to develop quinine. He developed this quinine not because he was interested in the health of the people, but he was purely interested in the health of those who came to explore Nigeria. And so the exploration expanded, their trade went on, and of course less people were dying, less Europeans were dying, and so they were making money. So you could see that as early as that time, there was no thought of looking at what the people wanted. It was actually what they themselves wanted that was driven by their political and economic uh, um, uh, motive. However, during this same period, 
apart from the influence of the British uh, government, you know, because Nigeria is a British colony, the missionaries also played a very great role. Uh, you remember the, the uh, issue of twins. In those days when anybody delivers twins, they have to kill the twins. You know, but it was the advent of the missionary that stopped this. And uh, this is accredited to Mary Celeste, who engineered uh, this uh, stopping of this. So in Nigeria, the Roman Catholic mission and the uh, CMS you know, uh, came and uh, settled in the southern part of the country. The Sudan missionary settled in the northern part of the, of the uh, country. It was also during that period that the Europeans started training health workers like doctors, nurses, laboratory uh, uh, technicians. However, most of these trainings happened abroad. So they were sending a lot of our health workers abroad to, to train. In addition to that, the missionaries also brought education. And so the mix of that helped the spread of both the medical services and even the education. So the missionaries were linked to both the educational sector and the health uh, uh, sector. And so around 1870, the British colonial government began providing formal medical services, first of all, to their workers, and then later to members of the of the of the community and so the same trend also followed the uh, government hospitals also followed the same trend however however there was a break there was a problem during the world war so most of the europeans that came into nigeria including some nigerian health workers we are now sent out to go and participate in the world war and so this depleted the human resources for health in nigeria However, after the World War II, most Nigerians had gotten, well, especially the agitators, the nationalists. We had the nationalists as a result of what happened in the war. And so the nationalists began to uh, agitate for health services for the people, instead of only health services for the Europeans. So they played a great role, the nationalists, people like the Zeke of Africa, People like uh, Chifawolo War, people like uh, Hamadou Bello from the north. So they all came from the various regions of the country. Zik came from the southeastern region, Awolo came from the western region, Hamadou Bello came from the northern region. And there were a uh, host of other, Azikboro. So all these people started fighting for both independence and for the health of the people. So this was the first move to actually establish a modern health services in Nigeria. In 1960, we now had our independence. But it was now discovered that most of those health services that were established before the independence were highly strained. So many people were now attending hospitals. The cost of uh, attending hospitals was rising. And then a lot of people started depending on their own resources to pay for health because the health services, the health facilities were very, very uh, few. And so, two years after independence and shortly before becoming a republic, because we became a republic in 1963, the first indigenous health development plan came up. But before then, we had a colonial development plan. But that colonial development plan was, I mean, centered on just the, uh, what the visitors, uh, what people I call visitors, the explorers, will benefit. And so it did not target what the uh, community members will benefit from the health system. But the first indigenous national development plan was now centered on what people will do and will get from, from that. And so, between 1967 and 1970, we had a civil war, the Nigerian Biafra War. 
And so that distorted the health system a little bit. And so immediately after the Nigerian Civil War, that was in 1970, we had another uh, a plan, which is the Second National Development Plan. This was enunciated to take care of some of the damages that occurred during the, the Civil War. And of course, this continued until 1975, when we had an oil boom. And so there was this National Development Plan, which was engineered by the oil boom. We had so much money, we didn't know what to do with the, with the money. <laughs> However, this was the first attempt to make a comprehensive uh, plan and uh, attention to health system in Nigeria. At this stage, it was based on what we call the Basic Health Services Scheme. Now, the Basic Health Services Scheme was a scheme that was developed to give just purely curative services. So, they gave little attention to preventive services. We had no outreach services, health workers sat in the health facilities to receive uh, patients. But one of the drawbacks of that this health services scheme was the lack of community participation. So the community members were not carried on you know, in that uh, basic health services scheme. And of course, like I said, it was skewed towards uh, curative uh, services. Although we had oil boom then, but because of the zealousness we had, the National Development Plan was like would I say over plan? And so at that point, we couldn't fund it anymore. So it became a big problem. Most of the health workers had little time to spend on prevention and community outreach. They didn't have the equipment to work with. And we had poor referral system. So the three levels of care were not properly connected. There was a disjunct. And like I said, the most important shortfall of that basic health services scheme was lack of community participation. Of course, primary health care era corrected this uh, problem. And so from there, we now moved over to the era uh, in which a lot of global uh, ideas came up. Of course, the first was the, the primary health care. So we had a comprehensive uh, primary health care approach, which was a whole system focus, and they now incorporated community participation, community ownership, and that the health system should be community driven. So it was based on needs of the people. Of course, as we continue to explore the primary health care uh, uh, system, um, suddenly selective primary health care came up. And so this was basically uh, targeted at some uh, programs, some diseases, you know, as a result of economic crisis. That was when we started hearing uh, things like safe motherhood. And so they concentrated on mothers. All the child survival strategies, you know, the go you know, the growth monitoring, all right, hydration, breastfeeding, immunization, uh, food supplement, and so on and so forth. So that was what was happening at that time. But significantly enough, around 1988, we developed our health policy. Now, this health policy was a framework for the management of the health system through the primary health care. The health policy says the primary health care should be the bedrock of the health system in Nigeria. But unfortunately, the same primary health care and said that the policy says should be the bedrock or the foundation of the least funded. And so that was the main, main problem. Even in the health policy, the issue of referral, we had it, that the three levels should be connected with a proper referral system. In practice, that is not uh, being done. And so this served as a template on which Many indigenous and vertical health sector reforms now occur. So all the global reform that was now taking place 
was now hinged on our own national health uh, policy. Of course, this health policy was revised about 1990, uh, 2004. Then we moved over to the reform period. Again, like I said, the reform periods were driven by global trends and global interests. So it wasn't as if it was Nigerian idea. So we were just following what uh, other people were doing. And so, but in our own country, we had our own reform, which involved the restructuring of the Federal Ministry of Health. Before then, we had no Department of Primary Health Care. Department of Planning, Research, and Statistics. And so this reform, part of it was to restructure the uh, Federal Ministry of uh, Health. And then we created the National Primary Health Care Development Agency to be a kind of implementing body of the primary health care. Since the uh, policy has said the health system in Nigeria should be based on primary health care. Then the country was divided into six divisions for administrative uh, Convenience. Then we started training a cadre of health workers called community health extension workers and community health officers to uh, take over some of the functions of doctors because we didn't have enough doctors, we didn't have enough midwives. And so as far back as that period, we have started practicing task shifting in our, in our health uh, system. Then the Bamako Initiative Program, which we, are all, we know all about, that used the Drug Revolving Fund to, to make sure that both communities um, participate and have drugs in their, in their facilities. And then our needs, the National Economic Empowerment and Development Strategy, again, was derived from the National Health Policy. Uh, it was just like a kind of implementation strategy for our uh, health uh, policy. And then it was now realized that there was need to get in the private sector. And so we developed a framework for public-private uh, partnership. And then to drive all these reforms, two basic documents were developed. The first one is the National Strategic Health Development Plan, which at the state level is called the state's Health development plan. So every state had their development plan and then it was brought to the national and used to develop a national strategic health development plan. Anything you want to do in health must be hinged on this strategic development plan. If you're a donor, you're coming to Nigeria, you must work with the national strategic health development plan. We had eight priority areas in this strategic health development plan, which is similar to the modern the WHO building block. Of six. So we had human resources for health, had health delivery, had health financing, governance. What we added in our own that is not in the WHO building block is the partnership for health, community participation, and research for health. Otherwise, all the other components uh, of the modern uh, the WHO building block was incorporated, were incorporated into the, the, the plan. And then the National Health Bill, which described the, and redefined the national health system and its function at various levels. Now, this bill has gone through a lot of problems. The, the National Assembly has passed this bill twice. And the President has refused to give assent because of some political issues. And when the mandatory 30 days passed for the president to give assent, the decision of the National Assembly got annulled. So they had the document had to go back, but luckily it's now the table of the president. Now that bill provides for the National Primary Health Care Development Fund, which is a fund to invigorate the primary health care system. So we believe that if the bill is passed, then our health systems will be purely strengthened through the primary health care uh, approach. Of course, the bill provides, the fund provides that 
2% of our consolidated fund will go to that fund. Of course, consolidated fund means what you get before you start spending. So primary health care development agency is supposed to handle 1% and the National Health Insurance Scheme is supposed to handle 1% and they have said they're going to use it for community-based uh, health insurance. And so finally we came to the, of course, the MDGs and the current uh, mother health coverage. So what is happening globally? The MDGs and the mother health coverage is also happening in, uh, in Of course, the at that point, we also developed the National Health Insurance Scheme in order to make people assess health when they are sick. However, that's a different problem now. The National Health Insurance Scheme has not worked properly and our coverage is still at less than 5%. So finally, the Nigerian health system has evolved through a complex and rapidly changing social, political and economic environment has suffered a lot of setback, especially because of the fact that the local government or the primary health care system that was supposed to be the bedrock of our health system was not properly attended to, was not uh, given enough attention. But there are efforts, efforts have been made now to strengthen the health system. 